Some of the most common animals in the world are opportunistic omnivores and insectivores that although usually small, dominate the world's ecosystems and are heavily resistant to climate and geological changes due to their food sources being almost inexhaustible. At any time, these small animals can rise up and evolve to become specialists, maybe a giant lumbering herbivore or a powerful carnivore. In South America, up until fairly recently, the animals that filled the same niches as rhinos or even bears in other parts of the world had evolved from armadillos, because the only shelled mammal that has ever existed just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Armadillos belong to a group of animals known as Xenathra that they share with the other unique South American animals, anteaters and sloths. The group that armadillos belong to is known as Singulata and is the oldest of the Xenathrans, diverging over 60 million years ago. Xenathrans have quite a few features that make them unique from other animals. One of the main things is that they have very robust joints in their hind legs, the name Xenathra meaning strange joints. This is an adaptation that historically freed their forelimbs up for digging, as all Xenathrans are either burrowing animals themselves, or in the case of sloths, have many burrowers in their ancestry. Possibly the most interesting thing about Xenathrans though, is that they are very distantly related to nearly all other mammals. Although this group is now exclusively tied to the Americas, to find their place of origin, we would actually need to turn to Africa, as the Xenathra group most likely first appeared when South America and Africa were much closer to each other. Similar to South America, Africa has its own unique group of mammals not closely related to most other mammals, known as Afrotheria. This group contains aardvarks, elephants, and manatees. It is thought that the Xenathrans and Afrotheria formed one group of animals that split from all the other placental mammals 100 million years ago before the extinction of the dinosaurs. However, when South America and Africa started to tear apart and move further and further away from each other, they were isolated. But Afrotheria seemed to have carried on evolving at the same rate as the other mammals, and to this day animals like elephants, although distantly related, do not seem primitive in comparison to any other placental mammal. However, this couldn't be more different in the case of Xenathrans, that are very primitive. They actually have the lowest metabolic rate of nearly all mammals, including marsupials only being beaten by egg-laying mammals like platypus. Although it would seem like this would be a major disadvantage, the low metabolism of armadillos is actually behind a lot of their success. They don't need to eat much food. Individuals like the Andean hairy armadillo can live at altitudes of 4,000 meters, their low body temperatures make them well suited for hot environments, and it is entirely possible that having a low metabolic rate may have been an important precursor in developing a shell. Unfortunately, the fossil record among the earliest cingulates is quite poor, and the oldest evidence of armadillos is a bit of fossilised shell that dates all the way back to 55 million years ago in the early Eocene. To date, no shellless or transitional armadillo has ever been discovered, meaning exactly how the shell formed is not understood. Unsurprisingly though, cingulates most likely evolved their shell to protect them from predators, but this is only half the story because why haven't other mammals evolved a shell before, if they are a good predator deterrent? Some of this could just be chance, as the mutation that would kickstart the development of a shell is probably quite rare, so it is more likely that animals would just become faster and more agile over time. But this could have also been down to their slow metabolism. Although armadillos are surprisingly speedy if they need to be, they are generally slower moving than animals of a similar size, and so developing a shield would be very useful if they are not as quick as other animals for avoiding predators. This hypothesis is evidenced by the fact that very few mammals have evolved armour, whereas this is a fairly common adaptation among cold-blooded animals. Unlike other armoured animals like turtles, the shell of an armadillo is both very thin and has a segmented section in the centre. This makes armadillos quite flexible for shelled animals, and means they can enjoy the benefits of having a shield from predators, but also being fairly quick. The differences in their shell distinguish them from tortoises, but both of these very different creatures have converged on some of the same solutions to overcome certain difficulties that come with living with a shell, which also just happens to be one of the funniest examples of convergent evolution in nature. Both male armadillos and turtles have very large penises for their body size, Having giant shells that restrict their movement make it hard for both type of armoured animals to mate, and this was evolution's answer to this problem. 
Interestingly, as this feature has evolved independently in two different groups of animals, this may have been the way that heavily armoured dinosaurs like Stegosaurus were able to breed. Up until relatively recently, South America was an isolated continent, and had its own unique animals. But when the continent joined up with North America, a lot of these unique animals died out, being replaced with ones coming over from North America, like dogs, cats, deers and alpacas. Today, armadillos are usually either insectivorous or opportunistic omnivores, and no larger than a dog, but they used to occupy all sorts of niches and have all sorts of different diets. One prehistoric armadillo species that demonstrates this the best was Macroeuphractus, that was not an insectivore or an omnivore, but had the sharp teeth of a carnivore. It was about the size of a leopard, so would have been capable of eating fairly large prey, perhaps feeding on the South American hoofed animals it shared its habitat with. It is possible that due to the burden of its shell, that Macroeuphractus rarely deployed long speedy pursuits for their prey, and mainly scavenged, ambushed, or perhaps like other armadillos dug for their prey. But instead of looking for ants, they may have dug up smaller burrowing animals, maybe even other armadillos. Macroeuphractus was very unique for being a carnivorous armadillo, but many prehistoric cingulates were not omnivorous or insectivorous, but instead involved in the other direction of becoming giant lumbering herbivores. There were the pig-sized pampathirs that would have grazed on South America's grasslands known as the pampas, and the truly massive glyptodonts that could grow to the size of a small rhino, and very well may have filled a similar niche. Armadillos are very poorly suited for cold temperatures, and are found exclusively in tropical or semi-tropical ecosystems because of their low body temperatures and sparse fur coverings. Today, they are not found any further north than Kansas, or any further south than northern Argentina. However, glyptodont remains have been found in Santa Cruz, one of Argentina's southern provinces, where it can get very cold in the winter. So glyptodonts may have adapted features that made them better suited for harsher weather, but also it could have just been that because of their larger sizes they lost less body heat. The glyptodonts also looked quite different to modern armadillos. They had a flat face with the larger jaws for grinding on vegetation, but also they did not have the distinctive segmented part of their shell. Instead, it was just a single large dome which might have been an adaptation that allowed them to reach larger sizes. Because of these differences in body shape, it was thought that the glyptodont family was very distantly related to any living armadillo. But a recent DNA analysis has found this not to be true. Glyptodonts were actually nestled in between the South American armadillo families, Euphractinae that contains the hairy armadillos, and which includes Macroeuphractus, and Toliputinae that contains the giant armadillo. Dasypodinae, also known as the long-nosed armadillos that contain the only armadillos found in America, are the most distantly related from all the other groups, meaning that many species of living armadillo are more closely related to extinct glyptodonts than they are to the North American armadillos. Surprisingly, the closest relative of the glyptodonts are actually the smallest species of armadillo, the 10 cm long pink fairy armadillo that can fit in the palm of your hand. Glyptodonts diverged from the other armadillos about 30 million years ago, but actually remained about the same size as most other armadillos until relatively recently. 11 million years ago they were the size of a large pig, but by 2 million years ago they weighed up to 2 tons. Why armadillos evolved to fill a large herbivore niche is quite puzzling, because South America had no shortage of large herbivores at the time. However, it could have been that they were better adapted to fend off South America's prehistoric predators, the terror birds. These birds were most likely adapted to hunting large but agile prey, so a lumbering rhino-sized animal with a shell would have presented a real challenge for them. One member of the glyptodont family, Didacurus, even possessed a large mace at the end of its tail, that it may have used to defend itself from giant birds, but was probably more likely used as a weapon against other members of its own species. Didacurus was not alone among the cingulates for wearing large bony ornaments, as there was another armadillo called Peltophilus that had a set of horns on its head. Peltophilus lived much further back than the glyptodonts and was an ancient armadillo from 20 million years ago. It predated the time when armadillos started to become giants, but was actually quite large by modern standards, being around the same size as a dog. And as there are no living horned animals anything like this creature, it is very difficult to know what it used its horns for but probably used them to rut with other horned armadillos. When South America and North America first connected about 3 million years ago, many South American animals went extinct due to competition with northern animals. 
However, armadillos were one of the few South American creatures that did well in the north, even the giant ones. The medium-sized glyptodont Glyptotherium travelled north and was very successful in America and Mexico. This showed these animals were not fragile and vulnerable to foreign invaders, but were well evolved and adaptable animals. Eventually, the giant armadillos went extinct, as recently as 10,000 years ago, most likely due to a combination of climate change and overhunting from humans. Although their giant shell made them virtually indestructible to non-human animals, the slow speed it would have given them probably made them vulnerable to a well-placed spear tip. However, these large-shelled creatures and their carnivorous or horned cousins shows that no animals are inevitable, and evolution can very easily take a different pathway. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to be updated of future content, then consider subscribing. A massive thank you goes to my patrons for supporting me, especially Greenfors and Sammy Voz.